Okay, so this, this is basically the, the, the introductory slide. So the, the conference keywords, if I can, uh, you know, synthesize them, I, I would say research society and industry, more or less related to, to artificial intelligence. So uh, the idea was to collect researchers and practitioners from different fields. And these are the, the things that I like most, you know, being uh, among people who think different, differently from what, uh, how, how I think. So this is my, this is the outline of my talk. I will be talking about about social robotics a little bit and society, some, something a human-robot relationship, uh, anthropomorphism, uh, which is one of my uh, keywords, uh, uh, and then you know the use of robots as tools to understand us, uh, and finally I will talk a little bit about you know the academic community, uh, which I think should be behind the kind of research we, we are doing, and I'm starting from from the past, and you know for for from a particular year 1950, you know this was. Uh, for me, it was an important year because I was born 1950. Uh, but in the same year, you know, there appear a lot of uh, these four uh, publications, which I think uh, resume, I mean, summarize very well what robotics is. You know, it's, uh, it's science fiction, it's, it's computational, it's uh, computer intelligence, it's uh, cybernetics, and it's psychology. You know, all these, these books uh, and these uh, uh, papers came out at the same time, uh, which in some sense, you know, in my view, was the year where what we are all doing now started, you know, and, and, and you know, starting from there, certainly robots are, are changing uh, uh, in their shapes and that they are getting closer uh, to humans. We have robots, uh, uh, you know, playing with children, we have robots uh, uh, acting on stage for, for, and we have, you know, uh, ideas of robots interacting with, with humans. So this whole thing, you know, uh, developed these ideas, suggested this idea that there is a big market, you know, people is looking for, for money out of, of this and, and, uh, and, and, you know, uh, and this is, is changing, you know, society is, is definitely changing, you know, if you look at uh, one of the sentences of, uh, of Norbert Wiener, he was the father of cybernetics, by the way, if, if uh, someone uh, of you don't know, I mean, he was raising the issue of the mechanical brain, you know, which is uh, uh, either, you know, can destroy human values or can help us uh, uh, to realize them as never before. So th there is a, 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 a discrepancy here. And, and uh, uh, also, uh, uh, because society, you know, uh, one way or the other, respect these robots interacting with, uh, with, with us, you know, to be able to respect at least the first uh, law of Asimov, you know, don't hurt ourselves, you know, that's, that's what people uh, expect from these, from these robots. And, and uh, uh, so society is changing, but also economy is changing, you know, there is this sharing economy now, and, you know, we are putting our uh, values into the hand of strangers, you know, so this is a big, uh, is a big change, you know, and, and uh, a couple of weeks ago there was this uh, business round table meeting uh, uh, where, you know, more than 100 CEO from big companies in the United States declared that they are now going for an economy that serves all. So it is a big change. You know, somehow it's a, sh a change from shareholders to stakeholders. You know, and then uh, this this is really uh, uh, big. You know, and, and also. Uh, you know, uh, personal robots company needs to be uh, looking at, at the customers, uh, you know, from, from the other side, you know, from, here, from sites where they have never uh, seen it before, you know, they need to revisit the business model, maybe. I mean, I'm not a, 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 I mean, I'm an academic uh, since I was born, I would say. So, uh, may, but uh, may, maybe, you know, that uh, instead of selling robots, they should be rented, uh, you know, or, or, or shared somehow, you know, how, you know. And, and uh, you know, there are all these different ways of, of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, sending, uh, uh, you know, and, and selling and, and having customers for robots. So, how can we go uh, beyond this, this Roomba from, from that point of view? <coughs> Researchers also are changing, you know, and, and uh, 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 people like, like me in academia and, and research industries have started uh, looking at robots from the perspective of the society, not from the perspective of the industry, you know, to build something to be sold, but to build something to be useful, you know, and, and this, you know, is again the other side of the moon some, somehow, you know, and then you have seen flourishing in, uh, all around the world centers with these uh, human-centered uh, 
keyword uh, you know inserted into into their um, uh, and 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 we are you know promising robots collaborating with humans helping disabled people so it's really a a, a, a push toward um, toward um, <coughs> toward the society but on the other side we have to be fair you know, and, and this is one of the, the statements I want to, to develop during my talk. You know, we have to be fair to society you know, and avoid. You know, uh, I'm putting myself in the group. You know, avoiding uh, promising robots ability which are f too far ahead. You know, which we don't know how to do it. I mean, and the the the, the important reason, you know, is is because if you look for something, uh, if if you if you say that something is already reached. Uh, then you know you can kill good research and necessary research. So I'm sort of a, uh, egoistic in this sense. You know, I, I, I would like to invest uh, my effort in doing things which we don't know. But if people is convinced that these are trivial things, then <laughs> they will not be reached. So, and so in some sense, it looks we are close to delivering. I mean, in every newspaper every day, you, you read about autonomous cars, you read about uh, uh, personal robots, and I think we have contributed somehow, you know, when I say we, I say academia, we have contributed to create this. Uh, and, you know, and, and if you see uh, sometimes, you know, there are uh, videos li li like this one, you know, and then uh, these are designed to convince people, you see, the, the, she's kissing the robot, you know. These are designed to, to, to make people believe that the robots understand. And, and uh, it's not true, of course. We all know that it is not true, but if you see these this kind of things. And so uh, this, this is what people uh, somehow in society is looking at robots, uh, society looking at videos like this. You know. In reality, in reality it's, it's a, I mean, it's a failure of personal robots so far. I mean, uh, uh, people like Rodney Brooks, uh, I mean, they, they did a wonderful, someone had to do it. Someone had to start uh, saying, telling people that you can build robots that can interact with us. So this was a very important and very needed action so from, from his part. But, I mean, it was closed, you know. It was sold. Uh, now all the companies is going to, uh, to, all the workers are going to another company. And on the other side, you know, this paper it was rented by many people one year, and then people started not renewing the renting. You know, why, why is that? You know, and, and, you know, and, and SoftBank started buying other kind of robots. So, so what's the problem? I think the problem is that uh, there is a misunderstanding, a mix-up between, you know, working next to humans to work with respect to working with humans. Next to humans, you know, like, uh, like in, in the Universal Robots Advertising, you know, close proximity. No, this makes a big difference <coughs> if it is close. So, these all things, you know, is creating a, a lot of confusion. You know, and, and the companies are bought and sold. Uh, threads of research in big companies uh, are opened up and then they are closed down. So, what, what, what's the issue here? I mean, what is the problem? I mean, and, you know, to make it very simple, you know, uh, what, what is missing, you know, is, is, is the fact uh, that there is a mismatch between physical abilities and interaction skills, you know. In 20 years, Mark Raybert uh, in the 80s uh, was working on these hopping robots, you know, dynamic control of a robot. Now he's doing this kind of thing. So in, from the 80s to today, it's a big jump. I mean, a lot of uh, new technologies. On the other side, we are still stuck with remote control, more or less. I mean, there are very smart things now, understanding a few words, and you can interact by speaking. But we have not moved very far from, from, from this. And, and uh, uh, you know, th this fact is, is based uh, on the fact that, uh, you know, there is a, a big mismatch in robotics between acting and understanding. Uh, or in not only robotics, in, you know, these robots don't have the ability to understand what, what we do, you know. Uh, our skills, you know, they have limited understanding of understanding our internal status, you know. And, and most failures of these personal robots are due to exaggerated expectations about the robot's understanding. Uh, not about the robot acting, you know. So, in, in some sense, you know, what, uh, what I think the target uh, uh, is now is that 
is to have more humane robot, you know, humane meaning, you know, someone gentler, kinder, appealing, uh, more understanding, you know, going from, from a puppet to a, to, a, to a boy, you know, and uh, how can you do that? Of course, uh, this is a, a long-term goal, maybe, you know, reach the, in, I don't know, 200 years, I don't know, maybe more, but so how I can uh, condense this uh, idea of uh, 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 what is a humane robot somehow, you know, and uh, in order to define that, I found particularly interesting this sentence by Italo Calvino, who was uh, an Italian writer and also a scientist behind, you know. In this six memos for the next millennium, uh, he said that uh, uh, although science interests, you can see that, but the, the important sentence is that our imagination cannot be anything than anthropomorphic. So when we imagine something, we think anthropomorphically. We try to, to match what we see with anthropomorphism somehow. You know? So uh, I, I say that you know, this, this is a different AI, you know, anthropomorphic imagination. Uh, so a humane robot is not necessarily a humanoid, you know, but it is something that uh, should uh, be able to um, stimulate our anthropomorphic imagination. You know? and, and a very simple example that we all know is, is Wally. You know? So, in, in some sense, this is uh, uh, what, what uh, I think we should aim at. And uh, uh, in other words, uh, we need to make explicit, uh, you know, talking about robots, you talk about bodies, you know. You need to make explicit uh, the relationship between the body of the actor and the mind of the observer somehow, and, and vice versa, you know, and that, that's, so how, how you map what you see uh, into a motor representation in your head, and uh, from a motor representation in your head in movements outside, so it's, it's, a, it's a matching. So we need to address uh, uh, explicitly, you know, uh, two aspects of anthropomorphism. One, it's, let's say, the classical anthropomorphism of the body, you know, building robots like our iCub, you know, the ability to sense and move like a human somehow. But the other part is the anthropomorphism of the mind, the ability to relate uh, to an anthropomorphic body. You know. Some sense to think like a human, but, but that's the important thing, I think, is the relationship, you know. Uh, in spite of the fact, and on top of that, in spite of the fact that we know that there is a strong link, I'm not saying that there are two different things, on the contrary, embodiment, uh, is, is the mix of, of, of physical and, 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 uh, and mental things. You know, like uh, uh, Rolf Pfeiffer uh, wrote in his uh, very, very interesting book. You know, uh, neuroscientists that look at how our brain works, they, I mean, in this group, for example, found that uh, there are uh, um, neurons in our brain which code the shape of the object, uh, but not the shape in terms of geometry, doesn't really important the shape in terms of geometry, the shape in terms of how you grasp the object, so how you act on the object. So it's very linked to action. And then, you know, and, and, so, and, and, and then mirror neurons, everybody probably knows what mirror neurons are, but I mean, these are neurons which are activated at the same time if I do an action or if I see someone else doing an action. So, uh, this sort of synthesizes the better I act, the better I understand. We have been doing a lot of acting in our robots today, but not enough, uh, and not enough uh, understanding. So the shape uh, uh, is not really important. Uh, you know, and you can build robots that can grasp objects. You know, like uh, uh, like in this way, uh, with, a, with a bag full of uh, of, uh, of coffee beans, but. Uh, uh, you have to consider that we are talking about personal robots now working with us, you know. So, uh, you need an anthropomorphic mind uh, uh, to give a meaning to a chair. What is a chair? A chair is an action, it's not a shape. It's an action related to the shape, uh, my anthropomorphic shape. And I need an anthropomorphic mind to tell you, I mean, to, to, to discover a shape. And, you know, if you are talking about interacting with humans, it's even more important, you know, what is a human, you know? A human is, is a relationship, it's not, uh, uh, it's, it's not a shape, it's, you know, it's a relationship, you know? So, uh, I mean, this, uh, this part, uh, this uh, initial part of my talk, you know, uh, I, this 
I wanted to convince you somehow that although working with robot bo bodies is still an important aspect of robotics. I mean, uh, you know, funding agencies now are very much, uh, for us, interested in disruptive technologies. You know, body is fine. I mean, you have to, we still have to do a lot of research there, you know, on materials, on, on, on actuators, sensors, and so on, and so forth. But the disruptive technology is really linked to relational skills, not to gymnastics, not summer salt kind of things, you know, uh, the robots uh, somehow uh, behaving as predictable machine. I mean, you want to have a robot which behaves in, in such a way that you can predict what the robot is, is, is going to do, you know. And, and so the, the main obstacle from, from, uh, uh, from the research viewpoint is how to put uh, a model of the human in the robot. You know, to understand the others, you know, their intention and so on and so forth. And, uh, and this is totally unrelated with the shape of the robot. Uh, an autonomous car has to have a model of the human inside uh, to be able to, uh, you know, interact with the cars driven by humans or with bicycles or with, you know, uh, pedestrians and so on and so forth. So there is no way of escaping this. There is no going, there is not going to be an autonomous car uh, working, uh, you know, obeying the first asim of law, unless the car has a model of the human, and and, and that is, uh, 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 and uh, so no model, no safety somehow, you know. So we need uh, uh, we, we need to address uh, uh, which kind of anthropomorphic features uh, we want to exploit uh, uh, to relate to humans, you know. Of course, I mean. Uh, we cannot uh, look for it exactly a human, you know, this is uh, out of, 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 of question with the technology that we have and with the knowledge that we have. We don't know. <laughs> so it's not a problem of uh, better material, it's a problem of more knowledge about this, these things. So uh, which combination, I mean, the minimum amount of anthropomorphism, uh, you know, uh, that we need uh, to have somehow a relationship uh, with, uh, with the robot. And then also, you know, which level of complexity, you know, uh, how complex? I mean, we cannot really uh, afford uh, to build a very complex robot if we want to use it uh, for personal things, you know. And, and, and uh, 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 you know, this, this, this idea of, tr of, 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 uh, of trading a cost and complexity, you know, building simple robots, uh, uh, which are not smart uh, and, and precise enough uh, to 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 be a, a good uh, uh, you know to be a good uh, um, a good uh, product to be to be sold you know uh, maybe you know with this idea of the sharing economy uh, the 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 goal would be to build personal robots which are more expensive than you know the two thousand dollars things that you can buy or one thousand dollar machine that you can buy but but you know with the idea that maybe they can do something useful, not as uh, these very uh, simple robots. So which way to go? I mean, and, and then I want to spend a few, a few slides talking about deep learning because it's one of the topics, uh, all topics of research these days. So uh, uh, which way to go? We, we see part of the roads ahead of us, we see it. Part of the road is not seen, so it's, it's hidden. So which model? I mean, uh, I'm uh, personally academically interested in, uh, in the human brain, you know, understanding the brain by building robots uh, and building robots by understanding the brain. So uh, for me, it's an essential uh, uh, ingredient, not for everybody, fortunately, because we are all different, but, but for me, it's an important. So which model I'm, I'm going to use? Is, is deep learning, you know, as, 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 as promised, you know, in, in, uh, bringing us intelligence? Well, <coughs> in a very simple and, and, and a very simple way, I don't think deep Deep learning is the solution that I like, at least, you know. Uh, first of all, because it does not explain, you know, uh, this hidden uh, processing. It does not explain, and to me, understanding is more important than performance some, somehow. And also, deep learning is not a model of the brain, you know, this idea of, of uh, of, uh, of uh, multiple uh, layers is, is not is not is not really uh, is not really the solution I like because I mean any uh, simple task that we perform is performed in our brain in a huge number of layers. 
not even you know the number of layers that are that are used today. So, and and, uh, and, and this idea is is, is not the, um, does not resonate with 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 what is in, in, with what uh, is thought now about um, how the brain works. Uh, and uh, last but not least, you know, deep learning is more correlation than causation. Even you know uh, Joshua Benjo, which is one of the person that actually started this deep learning many years ago, uh, he's saying that we need machine that can discover causal models, which is, which is not there. So, on the other hand, what I think is that, you know, this idea of deep learning may be the starting point of this, you know, child machine approach. And what I mean by child machine uh, was well defined by, by Alan Turing when, you know, in his uh, 1950 book, you know, he said, instead of trying to produce a program to simulate the adult mind, uh, why not rather try to produce one which simulates the child? You know, if these were then subjected to an appropriate course of education, one would obtain the adult brain. So that's a starting point, you know, uh, the child uh, somehow, and I'm going back to this. And also, uh, also Asimov, you know, in, uh, implicitly, uh, implicitly said that in his, in his uh, iRobot book, when he said that, the, you know, this uh, positronic brain uh, imbued each robot with what amounted to a prenatal uh, education. So starting from there, even uh, Kubrick in 2001 uh, Space Odyssey, when, when uh, you know, they started uh, pulling out the memory from Hal, uh, he, he's going back to, to when he was a child singing songs uh, for children. So it was embedded there. And, and, you know, and, and this idea was, of course, one of the ideas that uh, we worked on, uh, we call it developmental robotics, you know, the idea of uh, of having a robot which becomes intelligent, you know, following uh, the path that uh, we follow during our cognitive, motor, and, and sensory development, uh, uh, maybe you know that uh, this idea of deep learning can can give that, can give the base of of, of uh, uh, you know the time zero, what I call the time zero. You know, the, the maybe with developmental robotics we we started learning evolution somehow. You know, it's just too much. You know, and certainly. We need, uh, we need different tools for the evolutionary part and from the developmental part. So it is uh, uh, maybe that, that we, we can join forces here you know, and use this approach of, of, uh, of uh, generically talking, you know, deep learning, uh, um, uh, to learn to, to build the structure, uh, to build the morphology of the network somehow. Uh, so, uh, Again, this, this, it's, it's a convergence. I have a, 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 a metaphor for this. You know, things about uh, uh, time zero, you have a brain with a lot of players there. Everybody plays by itself, you know, its own instrument, you know. But it's there. It's something already there. And then, you know, the, 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 the agent is born and it starts interacting with the environment or even before. Birth, but then there is this development, you know, going on, and then finally, you know, this sort of a harmonic uh, playing of everything. So, this does not say how uh, we do it, and this does not say how close we are, you know, as JJ was was asking before. But it may be, you know, that we need different tools, uh, not only logic, not only, uh, you know cognitive uh, science, but also deep learning, as I was saying, evolution, you know, we need to, to make these things to converge. So somehow, you know, it's the old uh, battle between nature and nurture, you know, what is innate and what is developed. And, 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 uh, and somehow we can, uh, we, we could say that, you know, nature gives the architecture and nurtures provide the parameters for the architecture. So, in, in some sense, you know, this uh, condensing this, I think uh, the idea uh, here is to focus on the ontogeny of social relationship. Uh, you know, how we develop, uh, how humans develop, uh, you know, the relationship uh, between themselves, you know, uh, since uh, they are born uh, to, to the end. Uh, I, st I still have, uh, I think, five minutes. Is this okay? It's too much. Okay, so uh, let me go. Uh, let me go fast. Uh, I thought, uh, yeah, I thought it was half an hour. So that that's that's the reason why. Uh, so uh, we need to invest. Uh, so let me. 
well, anyway, we, we need to invest more in, you know, uh, in robots, not only in, uh, in actions, but also in communications. And, you know, this is uh, one of the topics. And, and uh, with the robot, we can do a lot of things, you know. Uh, uh, we, we can communicate a lot of messages with, uh, with our own body, and, and we can exploit that, you know. One thing, certainly, we need to, 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 to do is to, is to go beyond uh, reactive systems. You know, we, are, we have these robots uh, uh, in general. There are 40 of these robots around the world, by the way, but, I mean, they, they are doing very interesting things in, in, in reacting, you know, action perception. I think we need to go beyond and, and, and end up into an exploratory prediction loop, uh, uh, which is a more active uh, uh, role in the, in, uh, in the world. And, and, and uh, so the priority should be on technologies uh, to improve anticipation, not reaction time. And to do that, uh, uh, as I was uh, saying a few times already, we need to know our internal model. Some of the aspects, key aspects of how we interact uh, among ourselves are not known. A lot of them are not known. So we need to push that. We need to invest, uh, to invest uh, in parallel, you know, how to, uh, to study how the brain uh, how the human work and how you can implement that, uh, that on robot. And, you know, a humanoid is, is an ideal tool to study this because it's, uh, it's a robot which, with which I can interact, uh, uh, I can relate uh, uh, to, to, to it. So I, I can use the robot to implement models of humans, but I can also in, uh, use the robot uh, uh, to study how to interact, you know, and, and this is... Uh, uh, what I say is that you know it, you could see that as a wind tunnel, you know, to study to study in the social interaction. Of course, it's a teamwork, and uh, I mean I'm not uh, saying anything about w what we are doing, but uh, uh, but uh, I mean we do a lot of things uh, using the robot as a stimulus to interact because we can control its movement very precisely, so you can plan these things. So. Uh, so evolution is bounded by our lack um, of, uh, of uh, knowledge about, um, about the human mind. And uh, how, uh, how do we go? I mean, I, I, want, uh, I, I want to say one important thing. Let me skip this. I mean, uh, we have to go beyond biomimetic models, you know, models which describe what, uh, how things work. We have to ask ourselves why they work like that, you know. And, and in order to that, to do that, we need to join forces. I mean, we need to join forces in different ways. You know, uh, policymakers need to uh, make decisions based on facts and not on ideas. Uh, publisher needs to converge. You know, uh, Nature published an article uh, uh, saying that scientists must work together. And then, you know, after a few months, he published, started publishing journals with just splitting the field in four or more. So this is something we have to do. And this is most uh, a difficult thing. Uh, you know, academia need to nurture the formation of an extended research community. And when I say extended, I don't only mean uh, people working in technology or computer science, but also, you know, uh, performing arts, philosophy, you know, because some of these people know or, or, have, or have thought about what a human is, you know, and how emotions is, uh, is transmitted. Even with a drawing, you know, they, they know how to transmit emotion. So, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm finishing with, uh, with this, uh, you know, summary, just the keywords, think beyond real time, uh, social interaction, anthropomorphic mind, understanding uh, humans uh, to build robots and vice versa, and be fair to society. And uh, thank you very much, sorry for the time. Yeah. Thank you, Giulia Sandini.